Cheo Sami, Senator, former, formerly representing Kaduna Central at the National Assembly, has urged President Muhammadu Bukhari to urgently intervene in the ongoing feud between the Nigerian Police Force and the Police Service Commission over the recruitment of 10,000 constables. This is coming barely five months after the signing of the police reform bill by the Nigerian Senate. That's in April 2019. So can we say this was inadequately covered in the bill? With me to discuss this are, still from the last session, Noble uh, Obasi. Thank you very much, a legal practitioner, for joining uh, us. And of course, we have a new entrant, uh, Lolu Elegbe, political analyst. A pleasure to have you join us. Good evening. Okay. Is this an inadequacy? Let me start with you. Is this an inadequacy in the police reform bill? Let's just start from that. Well, it, I guess it's about interpretation, like most of these bills are. Um, I don't think it's so much an inadequacy as how it's interpreted in different, um, well, I guess you interpret it depending on where you look, which context you're looking at it from. In terms of, um, so in terms of recruitment, there were, I know there were some changes that were made in how that's going to be done in the, or that's how, on how that's supposed to be done, even right from how the um, Inspector General of Police is appointed. Um, I think the new law says that he will be appointed from a list of three applicants who are sent to the president by the police service council and all that, which wasn't what the case was. So they've, they've made those changes, but no law is perfect. And the way it's about continuous improvement. So even though um, issues like this recruitment are not, well, there's the adequacy question, but if you if you pass a law and you find out that there are gaps or um, we should have dealt with this thing we haven't that's why you have amendments to some of these laws sometimes so if there's this whole feud or argument with the, i don't understand what i well, not i don't understand but i don't see the point of it, of it. <laughs> because if there are gaps which they are saying that i'm not sure why they see it as gaps but clearly they do but if there are gaps all you have to do is sit down look at putting in amendments to some of these laws. No, there's no law in the world that on the day it was, it was passed covered every single thing. It's not possible. That's why we have amendments. You keep adding to them and you keep improving them. And that's how laws get uh, strengthened over, over, over a period of time. All right. So I don't... Right, right in, sorry to interrupt yep. you. Writing on the thoughts about you know, constitutionality and all yep. of that, the president has been approached in this matter mm. and um, he is reportedly said to have confirmed the constitutionality of the mandate of the police service commission to recruit police personnel yeah. why the um, inspector general of police is on the other divide he's saying that they have uh, the authority uh, to recruit uh, again show sunny comes here yeah. he says uh, the president should intervene it looks like he has intervened already. Should he now wield uh, the big stick? Let me bring Noble in and then you could add your thoughts. Okay, um, thank you very much. So basically from uh, the <coughs> Police Service Commission Establishment Act of 2001, it's section six, it's very clear that the Police Service Commission has the power to perhaps uh, recruit and appoint and even promote officers Except the, except the uh, Inspector General of Police, as officers of Nigerian Police Force. So uh, for the president to intervene and come into you know, the disagreement between the two parties, I think he clearly understands the position of the law. And then again, the, uh, the Police Service Commission bill, which was uh, signed by uh, the Nigerian Senate few mo five months ago, it's a bill. So the president has not assented to that. So the position of the president Stands because where well, well, the position of, of the president is not like it's um, what I'm trying to say is the, the president draws his own position from the act, which, yeah, which is the Police Service Commission Establishment Act of 2001, which was very clear on you know who should handle which role and you know and who shouldn't handle any role. So I think at some point the uh, Police Service Commission kind of perhaps delegated, you know, say the recruitment functions to recruitment functions to um, the Nigerian police force. But then again, it's, it's, it's delegation. So obviously, I mean, from delegation, you have like an authority which delegates, you know, some duties. So 
from my own point of view, I think what the president did was I was right. I mean, he, he just simply followed you know the position of the law. Right. I, I know you would want to add a thought, but uh, we need to move on. We don't have much time. Uh, the 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 police, a commissioner from the police service commission, is the one raising the issue of corruption uh, at the moment. And uh, social, this whole controversy, social commentators are saying that it defies logic. What is your take? So, what defies logic? I the mean, tough war between the two parties. Well, <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say these kinds of tough wars are not strange. They're not. New, let me not say they're, they're not new. Because there's always going to be that issue of who has the, I mean, like you said, the, the position of the law is clear. But the position of the law and how people choose to interpret it are two completely different things. So while the law says that the police, um, the police service commission is responsible for X, Y, Z, that's not going to stop someone from saying, well, this is my reading of it, and I'm going to do X, Y, Z, or I'm going to do A, B, C based on my reading of it. And they do that so that the courts then interpret what the law actually says. So it's not, it's not so when you, ha when you have these kinds of tough wars, as you call them, it's not, it's not new. In some cases, it's actually helpful because what happens at the end of the day is it goes to court, the courts interpret it, and then a precedent is set. And then you, you, have, you don't have these kinds of um, tough arguments. They, they, they probably have an argument over something else, but at least it won't be over this issue because that's been decided by the courts. That's been set in stone by the laws. So it's not, when they say it defies logic, I don't agree with that because these, not just with the Police Service Commission, this happens in different parts of the of government or even private sector, these things happen. It's not, it's not strange or new. Okay, I, I'm having a battle which question I should ask you first because the core questions seem important. I'll just shift with this one. Um, the police is known for most, mostly speedy response to issues when the Frank Mba is known for his, you know, warm interaction with the media. But in this case, it's been over a week. There's been, uh, you know, some sort of silence uh, in this matter. What do you make of that? They've not, re they've not responded to all the allegations by the uh, service commissioner. Don't forget that the service commissioner, I was, okay, I'll bring the question to you, just answer quickly, as okay. briefly as you can. So, uh, uh, well, from, from our point of view, I, I would think police actually know what they, what they are doing. Because I, I, I would imagine they, they, they know that you know, the power or the, the responsibility to you know, recruit does not reside with them. So perhaps that's why they don't say anything at the moment. Because it's the police service commission, you know, it's, it's, it's clear that's their job. Okay, the, the whistleblower in this case, Brian Lowe from the PSC, is saying that he's feeling threatened. Uh, his mobile phone, he has reliable information that his mobile phone is being monitored. His past is being, you know, revisited, uh, evaluated, and all of that, and he feels unsafe. And he wanted the media to know in case anything happens. Um, when you hear something like that, and then you hear the repeated accusation that the corruption fight sometimes seem one-sided, would you be surprised if tomorrow we hear that the EFCC is investigating this commissioner that came up to say there is something fishy about, you know, strange names in the list? Well, it would, <laughs> there isn't a lot that surprises me in Nigeria anymore, so no, it wouldn't surprise me. But where... I mean, it's, it's par for the course with us in Nigeria because once someone speaks up on corruption, almost certainly there will be repercussions for that person. It's almost, it's almost guaranteed. I mean, it's not... So if he's talking about things that um, he's unhappy with and he thinks things are not going the way they should or think people are breaking the law, those sorts of things, yes, of course, it's, it's, it's his job to speak up um, about these things. Maybe not publicly. I'm sure they have internal mechanisms to deal with these things. But if he gets to a point where he feels like that's not working, and for whatever reason, uh, maybe he feels like his position or, or even the commission is being circumvented, then he would do, I guess, what he's done, which is go public with it. Now, not everybody's going to be happy about that, obviously. A, you're accusing um, this organization of corruption. B, even if you think something is corrupt, I'm sure that there are internal processes and procedures to deal with those sorts of things. But again, this is part of that tough battle because if EFCC goes after him tomorrow, then it's clear that um, 
it's clear, it becomes clear which side of the tough battle has the most power. That's, that's what it boils down to, unfortunately, really. Your thoughts? <laughs> well, uh, in, terms, in terms of our, you know, uh, the, uh, say, what, what the service commissioner in talked about in, in terms of people uh, see trade to life, and is uh, and people trying to perhaps hacking his phone. So I, I would I would totally uh, would want to say that it's um, it's more or less him being in a particular position where he's the signature of all eyes. And the fact that it's a tough battle between you know both parties, uh, Nigerian police force and the uh, police service commission. I, I think. It's, it's something which is kind of really, really expected, considering the fact that uh, it's, these, are, these are like sister bodies trying to show who has much who power. Who is stronger than the other. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, uh, on, a, on a final note, how do you think this situation can be resolved? Is it even possible? Because there's another batch of recruitment coming on soon. <laughs> yeah, and that, um, I mean, it's, a good, it's, it's good you mentioned that, because you mentioned earlier that the police has been pretty much silent on this. Yes. They're not, I mean, they're not stupid. They're not, going to, they're not going to go public criticizing the body that is responsible for their promotions, for example. So they won't, they, so I'm not, they, their silence doesn't surprise me, to be honest. So how does this end? I'm honestly not sure. Um, it, this is a power play more than anything else, to be honest. So at the end of the day, it's, it's going to depend on which side, um, I think, which side is able to show more power, if that, if that makes any sense. Because at the end of the day, it's it's a power struggle. Mother, it's beyond the tough way, it's more it's a power struggle, I believe. And so at the, a, a power struggle is determined by who has more power at the end of the day. And that's where this is going to end up. I think it'll end up in court at some point. Um, somebody's going to sue somebody, and then the courts will determine this eventually. All right. Um, what Do you see a possible resolution? Well, I I would think yes. That um, uh, it's a power it's a power tussle between these uh, two bodies, and I, I I strongly believe at some point someone would definitely step in to tell them and to sit them down and tell them and say, guys, this is your principal. This is the person in charge of you coming into this force. So I don't think I don't think this is the right thing to do, and they have the powers to do this. So I think I think it would be right for you to just. You know, sidestep on this issue and let the law have its way. So I believe, I believe it's it's uh, it's resolvable, and I I think I, I see I, I see the resolution in. in I, I, I think I see it being imminent. All right, thank you very much, gentlemen, for thank sharing you your much. thoughts with us. Thank you. Always a pleasure to have you join us. All right, thank you for staying with us. Some days ago, security operatives were said to have stormed the office of Omoyele Shore Shahara reporters. He was arrested in August 2019 and detained by the Department of State Services, DSS, for plotting to stage a protest tagged Revolution Now. We had a discussion on the issue and quite a number of our viewers had some things to say on the issue. So for our plus reports today, we bring you some of these comments. After this, I will give you my take. Do stay with us.
I'm tempted to throw caution to the wind and just stand up right now and storm out of the studio to show my solidarity with Shawari and others whose rights are being trampled on by their continued incarceration by the federal government of Nigeria. But I would not. If I did, though, I might probably trend for a minute before Nigerians move on to something else. <laughs> okay, I want to add to that thought, but you get my drift. There are those, however, who continue to speak out against this continued detention and the recent charges have been described by senior advocate of Nigeria as dead on arrival. It has been condemned by many, home and abroad. But with what we now know, are the charges really dead on arrival? I guess we'll know what the court thinks on Tuesday. Whatever the outcome, though, it is pertinent that the government reconsider her strategy in this matter they risk solidifying Showare's national hero status. His continued detention puts the Buhari-led federal government in extremely poor light and further darkens her human rights record. Thank you very much for watching the program tonight. Do remember to follow us on all our social media platforms and share your reflections on our programs. See you later.